Hey everyone, Cobra here and welcome back to my channel. So today I have another video on Mecha Domination for you guys. So a common thing that I've been seeing a lot is a lot of people have absolutely no idea what beasts they should be using. I was one of these people, so I went ahead, I did some research for you guys, and I'm going to give you what I find to be the best beast to use and to upgrade. Now coming at this, there are different reasons for different beasts. Some of them are made for military stuff, some of them are made for arena uh, exploration stuff, and some of them are just ones that are going to help with development. I'm going to focus mainly on military, meaning troops are involved, fighting, uh, like doing rallies, attacking other cities, things like that, and then with a little bit of development. So we'll get right into it. So when you go in here, I'm going to show you how to figure out what beasts are good for and which ones to be using, in addition to telling you what I think are the best ones. So if we click on this here, you can see right up here beneath the name, it's going to say, it says ranged train and steel. So this is, it leads ranged troops in battle, it's good for training, and it's good for steel production. Now that basically sums up what its abilities do. So you can see down here, it raises recruitment speed by 30% as a passive, which means you upgrade it, it counts, regardless of whether or not you use him. Definitely a good one to have. Then you've got the steel one, and the last one is its military, you know, fighting capabilities. Now, for this, I'm not going to focus much on the exploration. There are already some guides out there that focus on exploration, uh, arena, beasts. I'm going to focus on the other ones. So you can notice this one only has one ability that actually affects combat situations so that's just the one now a lot of the actual paid dinos meaning the ssrs some of them like you know caesar you can get uh legit just very slow you can see caesar's got two here that both affect combat and you can see he's a rider military and hunt so hunt's going to affect your chances like your march speed um your hunting abilities um the chance of catching things and then he's got some military so he's a little bit better but then you've got some like this one here which is literally ranged military his only purpose is to fight you can see this is for fighting this is also for fighting this is also for fighting so this is going to be one this is however an ssr meaning this is a dino that really you're going to have to either take a long time to get up or spend money if you want to actually get him up high. So I'm going to be focusing on the ones that you can get ranked up well um, free to play. I'm going to kind of avoid the SSRs just because those ones are pretty much really good or all development. Um, but so getting right into it, the first one that I want to show you guys is the Fire Spitter. So the fire spitter, you can see here at the top, he is just rider military. So military is what we want to see. You can see here he's got a 30% chance to increase damage, just general damage by 10%. And then all units take less damage and raises rider attack. Now I don't have him upgraded very high, which is why, you know, these abilities are not very good yet. But they will get much higher. Now, this is one that I'm currently working on because he's got those two military abilities. A lot of the SRs only will have one. There's only a handful that actually have two. So this is going to be the first one. The second one is going to be the Scorcher. Uh, you can ignore the names I have. I've renamed most of mine different things, like this is Missile Mammoth. It's actually the Scorcher. You can see here, he's a military hunt. So he helps with hunting. And then all units gain 8% attack, and all units take less damage and raises ranged defense. So here is, once again, another one that has two combat abilities. He's going to be another one that will be good to use when fighting uh, with troops involved. And then the third one I want to mention is the Sand Stinger. Now this guy is straight military. His first ability is just a passive that raises unit capacity. That is a good one that will allow you to send more troops with your marches. 
That helps a lot. The more you have, the more damage you can deal. Then his second one reduces the enemy's attack. His third one, all units take less damage and raises your rally capacity. Another really good one to have. So he's going to be the third one that I recommend for actual combat purposes. Because one, he increases the amount of troops you can send both to normal marches and to rallies. And then he also has those two combat abilities. Now, an extra one that I'm going to throw in here would be this guy right here, Subject 9. And he is a military heal. So he's kind of a wild card. His first ability raises the, inf the infirmary capacity by 8,000%. I'm guessing that means probably actual just 8,000, not 8,000%. That would be ridiculous. I'm guessing that's a typo. But then his second one is going to recover HP. And then his third one is going to gain HP for all troops and raise infirmary healing speed. So this here is also going to help. Um, if you don't have the other ones up, this will kind of keep healing. And is also viable for military purposes. However, the first three that I recommend are probably a little bit more uh, damage oriented. If you're looking to deal some massive damage, I would recommend, like I said, the Fire Spitter, the Scorcher, and the Sand Stinger would be my top three. And they are a Fighter, a Ranged, and a Rider. So there are one for each different type. Those are going to be your main military ones. Now, something I want to note here. There are a lot of different di uh, beasts that you also are going to want to at least somewhat develop for their abilities only. Uh, granted, they can be used in combat, but like these abilities can be really important. So the first one's going to be the Venom thing. You see, this first ability raises recruitment speed. 30% is a good amount to boost recruitment speed. That'll allow you to train a lot more troops a lot faster. Another one is going to be uh, the Pyrodra. He's got a research speed, which is the same thing. You know, research speed can go up to by 20%. That's going to help a lot. We've got the Sickle Claw, which can raise construction speed by up to 15%. We've got the Spike Roller, which can raise your training capacity by up to 100. Um, the Sand Stinger, which I mentioned previously, that has this, that will raise your unit capacity, as well as this third one, which raises your rally capacity. And then Subject Number 9, which is going to raise your Infirmary capacity. These are what I think are some of the most important development passive skills that you want to do. Passive means that they count regardless of whether or not you are using this beast. If you have this ability upgraded, it automatically counts. So when going through, you want to look at all the passives. Like this one says passive. This one says active once deployed. That means this only counts when he is in battle. This one has both an active and a passive. So if you upgrade it and you're not using him, only the passive will count, the top part will not. So you want to pay attention to that when upgrading different beasts, which one says passive and which ones don't. Now, for the most part, these middle abilities are going to be all um, things that are going to be... Well, actually, I take that back. Some of them are active, some of them are not. But you want to pay attention to your beasts on which ones are going to have the best military abilities if you're going to be using them to fight other people. Um, otherwise, you want to look at those abilities. Now, just worth noting, a lot of these SSRs, like this one, has three military abilities. So regardless of if you have a good fire spitter, if someone comes at you with a better death wing it automatically is going to have more abilities, so it will be very strong. But those beasts, the SSRs, typically are going to cost money to get up or a lot of grinding. So that's why I didn't include those in my list, but some of those are also very good. Um, another one, if you get some, this ability right here, 
the construction speed up time and construction speed is a really good one to have if you have the t um if you have shoot what is this one called nemesis um raised up a little bit although that one does cost money so not everyone will have that but these are just some of the ones that i think are the most important ones to use both for combat and then they're just passive abilities but take a look also worth noting is this third skill oftentimes will have a passive part in addition to the active part so even if you're not using this one per se if you level it up your ranged attack for all troops will go up regardless of if you're using him so it's good to have all your troops rounded the one thing i will say though the exploration skills for those ones none of these are ever passive these are all active so if you're looking for exploration stuff you really only need to upgrade the exploration skills on the ones that you will be using just because they do not do anything if you do it on any of the others but these first three pay attention for if it says passive so i hope this is helpful uh for you guys on which beasts are actually going to be the best to raise um like i said for combat purposes i would recommend the fire spitter the scorcher and the sand stinger um, but make sure to get at least all of them that you can up a little bit for those passive abilities they will help a lot i have a lot of work that i need to do and when looking into this, I realized that some of the ones that I need to upgrade, I have not been upgrading. So this definitely will help me figure out what I need to do. And I hope it helps you guys too. Please like and subscribe, especially if this was helpful. I try and make content that will help you guys. And the more support I get from these videos, the more likes, subscribes, and views that I get, the more content I will keep making for you guys. So please give me some support and stay tuned for more videos. I'll see you guys next time.